So if we could just uh, everyone find the table where they need to be. Thank you to everyone for, for coming today. Uh, my name's Gabe Friedman, um, and I want to welcome you to the Big Law Business Marketing Roundtable. Uh, I'm the editorial manager of Big Law Business. Um, I edit it with my colleagues, uh, Casey Sullivan and Josh Block. Um, so I just want to give a brief um, intro about our site and what we've been doing there for anyone who's been there and is curious or um, hasn't been there and is curious. We, we launched about a year ago with the idea we wanted to create a community where the legal industry, both law firms and in-house counsel um, and anyone else who works in the legal industry could come and have a resource to learn more about their industry, uh, find out what their colleagues are up to. And we've sort of been doing this through a mix of original reporting. Um, some industry commentators have also uh, given us their thoughts on various issues from legal operations to billing to um, a range of different issues. Um, so we launched about a year ago. It's been growing really fast. And um, this is the first of four events that we're planning for this year. And we're really excited about all of them. Um, I do want to give a thank you to our sponsors for this event. who have been great partners. Uh, that's Barrett's and Brunel and Relationship Science. And um, that's about all the re remarks I have for today. And I'll let you guys get started. We have a great event. Thank you again. from the change from 2007 to 2014 recommendations 
And this is by buying decision and power. Um, and, and sorry, buying decision and how people are making decisions. What do you think the biggest change here is from 2007 to 2014 and why? Someone said it. Social media, right? The reality is anything that you're buying today, you can go on the internet and find out everyone else's experience about it. And that's so true with lawyers and law firms today. And one of the things that we, sorry, that we really find is that your clients are talking to one another time and time again about what their experiences are with each law firm, with each lawyer. Um, I was at a law firm, I was a chief marketing and strategy officer for 12 years um, and did interviews on behalf of our firm. And I don't think I appreciated until I started working for a bunch of different law firms how much these clients are talking to one another and saying, let me tell you who to go to and why you want to work with them and how much they're calling up each one another and saying, who do you like and go to and choose and why? So we want to create those stories and client feedback is a way to do that. Here's a couple different goals of client feedback. Um, we interview on behalf of law firms. We interview with law firms. We train them how to do it. There's a lot of different models and people do it for a lot of different reasons. Um, I'm curious how many of you have formal client feedback programs in your firms right now? So 25% or so. Um, and people do it for different reasons. I'm curious, the studies show and I have the stats, so someone needs to be prepared to raise their hand. How many of you are skeptical of client feedback interviews or um, think that they're maybe not as important as the industry is saying? The studies show that 59% of the law firms out there are saying that. So someone in this room is feeling that way. So I'm not gonna mention any names, but someone is, um, but the reality is there's a lot of different, and the voice of the client, what I used to say is there's nothing that changes the submarine or aircraft carrier, which is a law firm, faster than the voice of the client. So um, let's talk a little bit about this. This is from a 2011 survey. We're finalizing new data in 2015. Back then, 52% of firms were not seeking feedback. It's right at 89% now. Um, there's a real confusion between saying, yes, we do client feedback interviews, they're really important to us, and a managing partner saying, thank you, this is an important relationship to us, or the lawyers going out and saying, this is a valuable relationship, we want to get your feedback. Um, but the reality, the purpose of it is really to create new conversations, and we really believe, um, I usually get this question from the audience, and with time, we don't have a lot of time for interaction, but. In, of the 1,500 in-person interviews that we've done, I can count in one, less than one hand of individuals who have said no to the request, right? They're loving it. They want it more. They want to provide the feedback. It's usually the lawyers in the firm that are skeptical, saying they don't have the time, they're too busy. Um, so this is a really important, so of the 1,500 or 1,000 plus interviews that we've done, I like to say the summary here, this is what they really care about. Can you fix my problem? And that's my problem in the moment that I'm dealing with today. One of the biggest things that we hear in feedback is that firms are too busy pitching their A-team and selling who they think are great and not understanding what the um, clients are interested in where their problems are really set. Can you make my life easier? I would be a billionaire and not standing in front of you today if I had $100 for every time someone said, I love this lawyer or this law firm because they make my life easier and they give something very specific. And do I like you as a person should probably be, be number one. The reality is there are so many smart, amazing lawyers out there today. They're, unless you are the ultimate brain surgeon, they're buying you because they like you. Um, this is a little bit about competition and the fierce, um, there's three of us that own this company and 10 of us that do the interviews and we kind of go back and forth all day long in our interviews as we're interviewing smart people and say, we've got the best quote today and you know, here's what they said and the reality is, Here's one that we, there are law firms lined up to China who can and want to do good legal work for us. But this is our favorite. Smart is why you got in the door. How you manage the relationship is what keeps you inside. This is a relationship business um, and they're buying the relationship. Here are the most common themes that we hear in client feedback. No surprises. Um, value, trust, make my life easier. Understanding my business and industry, they're buying that almost on top of anything else today. They're looking for transparency. And communication is the number one thing to make or break a relationship. From the best to the biggest to the smallest boutiques, that's what they're valuing. One size fits one is a quote that we love. It's from the general counsel of Clorox. Does anybody know her name is Laura Stein? She's this fabulous, dynamic woman. And she got up in a panel and said, I hate those hats and shirts that say one size fits all. 
the reality is one size fits one. And so that's a little bit of our motto at Wicker Park. And I don't, I don't have the magic fillet here and to say that if you were to do this one thing, all your clients are gonna love this, or um, this is what we're really hearing. What we really want the message for you to be is you need to be out there talking to your clients every day. And that if I were to ask you what your communication preferences are, or what you really value, or what matters most to you, or how I'm making your life easier, those answers are very different to the individual. And if you're not asking that, you're not informed that. Um, this is from the ACC Chief Legal Officer um, study recently, their most pressing issues. No surprise, but I will tell you the biggest thing that we see, we've been um, interviewing um, since, I have been since 2004 in-house counsel. And I would tell you that five years ago, we didn't hear anything about billing and budgets in interviews. It didn't come up unless there was a problem or something very specific of either the firm really wowed them or there was one big problem. Today, it is a topic of conversation in every single interview, but it tends to be around value. But the one thing that I really want to point your attention to is the too much work with too little resources. Ten years ago, a huge shift went of people going in-house for a better lifestyle, right? They left, corp they left being a lawyer at a law firm because they wanted a better lifestyle. They wanted more predictable hours. They wanted, um, you know, not to do the bill bars. The reality is everyone we're interviewing today is working harder and longer and under more stress than every lawyer at a law firm today. It's just not the case anymore. And so their expectations of their outside lawyers are increased dramatically because of it. I, no surprise in the industry trends, I think the things that we're seeing are the legal operations manager are making big plays and big choices um, in big decisions. I've interviewed, I would say, seven even just this year of a legal operations manager that is solely responsible for the operations of the in-house legal team to make sure that they're becoming more efficient, they're becoming more effective. Um, it is a huge trend. They're running the RFPs, and they're saying and comparing what law firms are most efficient and effective. Um, they're built often internally and built up within the organization, but there's, there's now an association of these individuals. So this is a real big trend and big data. The data that is available to your in-house, to the clients today of comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges is astounding. We get spreadsheets handed to us in interviews saying, I'll tell you exactly what I can buy for this price, for in this region, with this kind of experience. They know and it's just, it's a very different game of how much more knowledgeable, sorry, the um, consumers are. Um, of all the interviews that we've done, we analyzed all of our reports and um, summarize them into these eight key themes um, and what we're really hearing from 2007 to right now. Um, no huge surprises. I always get the question, why isn't diversity on your list? It, it is in terms of when we're asking if it's important to them. I will tell you that it doesn't always come up if, if we're not the ones asking. Uh, this is um, an analysis from the change 2011 to 2014. 2011 is the blue, 2014 is the red. These are mentions within our reports and what clients are mentioning more and caring about. The biggest change, communication and value, right? So these are amount of mentions in our written reports on what matters most to them. And value and adding value comes up more than anything today in terms of differentiation and what they're caring about. Um, we're the last three slides, and we're hitting a home run on timing. I love this. Uh, ticker up here, this is great, uh, so I can say, and we talked about when we were doing our prep session that we really wanted to talk about the results of client feedback. Everybody's heard about them, everybody thinks um, that they're important, but what are really firms doing? And so I, we want to talk about some of the things that successful firms are doing from the feedback, and then talk about both short-term and long-term. No huge surprise, I mean, I think the firms that aren't doing feedback are scared about the negative response and the negative feedback. I would say 90 plus percent of what we hear in client feedback is very positive. These are your clients. They want you to be successful. They're not looking to berate you. They're looking to say, this is what you do really well and what we value, and maybe what we value about someone else so you can, but they're not looking to tell you how you're horrible. Um, but if they are, or if it's a really small thing, they want you to say, I'm sorry, and they want you to say, we can handle that better, and this is what we're specifically going to do about it. Um, I think some of the best terms, teams are creating and building teams 
to support the clients, that they're changing their models and really saying, um, we're gonna work differently and this isn't gonna be a one-on-one -on -one game anymore. Um, and that's both for the benefit of the law firm and the benefit of the client. I think the third one's really point, important, aligning the firm's focus and values with the client's firm focus and values. Um, I would say that some of the best firms that we see, and we worked for over 80 plus law firms, are taking the time to say with their clients, tell me about your values, tell me about your goals, tell me where you're headed, and let's talk about how we're aligned with those specifics. And they're getting very granular in that, and they're understanding ex specifically how they can drive their client's success. Um, I've got a ton of case studies of specifically how these firms are aligning with their businesses, aligning and saying, we're gonna make you very successful to your bosses. Um, so the next one, making them look good to their C-suite. I had a really interesting interview a couple um, weeks ago and they were talking about a poor experience um, that they had with a law firm re uh, related to budgets. And I said, I'm just curious if you've had this conversation with them, you know, do, is, will this be new feedback to them or surprised? And she said, I'm gonna be real honest, they stopped me from having my family vacation and put at risk the fact of me sending my children to private school. That's not a conversation I'm willing to have anymore. The fact that they don't understand how to budget and the importance of that is not a conversation I'm willing to have anymore. Um, it's making them look good to their boss, right? They didn't meet their budget, which means she didn't meet her budget, which means she looked bad to her C-suite, which means she didn't get her bonus which means she didn't, was worried about paying for her child's college or private school. It's real, they wanna talk about it and it matters to them. Um, communicate early often and how clients want and expect. I started early and um, oftentimes we'll interview multiple individuals at an organization. And one of the things that we ask is, how do you like to communicate? Are you an email or a telephone? And ask each person, you know, do you prefer to be CC'd on everything? Do you, tell us about that. And we'll ask five different individuals and all five of them will have very different responses. And the key is to really know that and understand that and take that back to your teams because if you're an email person and you're the kind of person that wants to see everything and your team is forgetting that and going and bypassing and talking to the business folks, you're not getting that next call. Um, and then the listen, act, and repeat. I just think um, we don't believe that client feedback is any kind of replacement for every single day to day feedback with the lawyers of how are we doing, how can we get better. Um, so let's talk about some of the short term results that we're seeing from client feedback. Um, you know, uncovering the fact that they had a perception that a lawyer was way too busy and couldn't take on any work. Um, they loved this lawyer, they thought this, they were fantastic, but they said, I mean the reality is he's got way too much on his plate and we're just lucky he's gonna take the work that he's doing for us. The lawyer was completely capable of taking more. They had no idea that they thought that he was busy. Um, client expectations of succession planning. I would say that there are a handful of less than five firms that we've worked with that have meaningful succession planning programs and initiatives and communication with their clients and everyone is drastically failing and their clients are talking about it. Everyone else, I mean, they, our clients are telling us that they think that they have plans in place for succession planning and then when we go talk to their clients, they're saying nobody's talking about it. Nobody has a plan, they're not, this is not a three month transition for a 15 to 20 year client relationship, right? Um, so we really, talk, it, that comes up a tremendous amount in client feedback. Um, their top priorities and focus in the short and long term. I'm shocked how many multi-year relationships are out there and we'll talk about in the prep interviews. Tell us what you think their short term and long term goals. Where do you think they're focused? You know, let's talk about their strategic plan so we can have a meaningful conversation. And I would say less than 5% of every lawyer that we ask, do you have a copy of their strategic plan? Has one, right? These people are living and breathing by these documents every day. How can you possibly be an extension of their team no matter what you're doing, if you don't know where they're headed. Um, so I tee up introductions to new practice areas. I think one of the things that client feedback does best is to say what are they really buying and what do they care about, right? I can't tell you the amount of times that we've gone in and, and someone said, well, if you can find out, um, you know, we, we, we pitched XYZ and we thought they were really great and we're just confused on why they're not buying them and the reality is, they weren't even in the market for buying that. Their biggest problem, the kind of one, two, three, what do you really care about, is something very different. 
um, and uncover the total legal spend. We ask in every single client interview, unless someone tells us they don't want to know, what is your legal spend? And I can tell you, it's very rare they don't tell us, right? This is, they're living and breathing on. They know what percentage you get every single time. More longer term goals, here we go. Um, new matters, obviously, so the lateral groups. I can't tell you how many times an interview says, I had no idea they had offices there, lawyers there, geography there. They, they are completely unaware of where you have offices other than the relationship to attorney that they, ha that they know, period. Um, revenue, so we've, you know, some of the highest and greatest things, 40% of client revenue increase. We avoid a lot of RFPs. They're thinking about RFPs. You find that out in a client interview and we can help kind of say, well, what are you really looking to accomplish? Um, the, we talked about the lack of bandwidth. I think one of the best things is um, we talk about hiring needs and where they're focused and what they're gonna bring in-house. So many firms or companies are looking to bring more in-house for cost savings and the really strategic and smart firms that you guys are gonna talk about later today are coming up with programs to say, let us really figure this out for you and that it doesn't always have to be an in-house hire. And um, I think we're seeing more and more firms migrate really meaningful teams to client and industry teams. And this is my last slide with 45 seconds to go. I'm killing it, I love it. I really am happy with this timer. Um, this is one of the things that we talk about. It's easier to do 100 things and do each one 1% 1 better than to do one thing 100% better. These are small, really, things that you can be doing to moving the needle. Um, they, you know, they're not coming to you and saying, we need you to overhaul your billing structure, and, or you know, we need to completely take away this team. They want you to be successful. These are small things that you can do to make a really big impact. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim, who I'm gonna give you 12 extra seconds, Jim. Um, that's right, exactly. Um, who's gonna talk a little bit about ROI. Great, thank you very much. Yes.